guy, right now, Gatwick is around about the halfway stage of a considerable uh, 2.5 billion uh, pound investment. What's been delivered to date and has it made a difference to the overall airport and passenger experience? Well, if you look back five years, Peter, um, in fact, beyond that, to the point where there was a change of ownership of the business under its new owners, they committed really to transforming the airport experience. And you've seen right across the spectrum of, of um, infrastructure, technology, processes, that transformation take place. So we're not just building things, we're actually transforming the whole passenger experience, the people as well, uh, investing in people, you know, and a real focus around delivering the core processes of the airport as swiftly, conveniently as possible, because actually that really matters to customers. Just give us some examples of where this investment has gone on. I mean, I know there's been a huge amount in terms of the check-in area um, and, and the baggage systems. Yes, there has, but um, I would say the focus initially and continually is on our security processes. I mean, not only do we need to deliver excellent, safe security, but we want to do that in the most customer-friendly, productive way. Um, and just to give you some idea, we're now in a second generation of our security um, process and technology, which has really taken our throughput, that is the number of trays per hour that go through security, from what was around about 150 to 250 on average, way back in the day, to now the most productive security system in the world, which is delivering over 700 trays an hour. And That's our over a 400% increase. Yeah, and our satisfaction scores have gone up. Uh, that is because our people are so integral to the delivery of that as well. It's not just about the outcomes from the passenger. Actually, what that did for our retail business, if you take South Terminal, for example, where the second generation of security was first implemented, it was a win-win-win for everybody. The passenger satisfaction went up, the productivity went up, and actually we regained, by virtue of reducing the floor space we needed for security, 1,200 square meters of food and beverage space. So that was a big win for our retail business. Another change that's occurred in the last five years um, is that there's been a definite increase in your long haul network, uh, noticeably with new flights to China. Now there are 60 long haul routes in total um, coming out of Gatwick. And that means that I suspect there's been a clear shift in your overall passenger mix too. If you look across the spectrum of our airlines, we have about 50 airlines operating here right across the spectrum from low cost, full service, leisure airlines, regional. I doubt there is another airport in the world who has quite that diversity. Um, and therefore it keeps our retail business on its toes. So being agile and being very responsive to changes in passenger profile is critical to being successful at Gatwick. And so we, if we look back over the last sort of two or three years at the change in the mix, you're absolutely right, the, the long haul um, route network from here has expanded dramatically. In 2016, we were the fastest growing long haul airport in the world. We had 20 uh, routes and airline combinations uh, started in that year, and that continues in 2017. Let's go back um, about nine months. In January of this year, there was a fairly major move that took place at the airport. EasyJet and Virgin uh, moved to the North Terminal and British Airways to the South, and so it's fairly dramatic. But have these moves actually impacted retail across either of the terminals? With British Airways moving south, they have a particular characteristic uh, in terms of their spend and passenger uh, mix by comparison to EasyJet that's moved north. The need to adapt and change and reflect in each terminal the requirements of those specific passengers is certainly a challenge that we are seeing as a result of that terminal move. And because of the works we're doing in North Terminal particularly over the next 12, 18 months, it gives us an opportunity, I think, to take a step back, to look at what the North Terminal customer now needs by comparison to what it did before and actually adapt it to that, that purpose. This is a remarkable airport. You turn around 45 million passengers annually at the moment on a single runway. And yet, just how much scope for growth is there? Well, we remain very ambitious as an airport. Uh, we certainly don't see ourselves in a situation where we won't grow. Uh, in fact, I can al already see a, a pathway uh, to delivering another 5 million passengers from the airport and certainly beyond that. That will come through 
additional services that fill in the slots that we do have available, uh, increased aircraft size, better seasonality, um, you know, different times of day people operate uh, to and from. And as we extend the long haul network, we'll see uh, opportunities for those services to come in at different times of day by comparison to the UK based airlines. So, We've done a forensic amount of work on how we'll grow and we certainly will continue to grow. Great point on which to end the interview. Uh, Guy Stevenson, thank you for your time. Thank you. Rachel, we're in the South Terminal. You have responsibility for 82 shops and for 36 restaurants. Now, retail represents a very important and healthy percentage of Gatwick's overall uh, revenues. What then is your basic philosophy on retail? So retail represents uh, about 24% of Gatwick's revenue, so as you say, it's a significant part of our uh, turnover. Um, for me, retail is all about providing customers with what they want. Um, it's, a, it's an opportunity for people to relax before getting on their flight, um, to have something to eat or to browse the shops, um, and everybody wants something slightly different. So it's about creating an offer that appeals to the very broad cross-section of the community that we have travelling through Gatwick. Just moving across to the North Terminal for a moment, World Duty Free Group have just opened their brand new store there. Just how important is it to you? The new World Duty Free store in North Terminal is really important to us. It's very exciting to have it open. Um, World Duty Free are our biggest retailer across the airport, so it's very exciting that we've now got the store that's able to offer a much broader range of products for our customers going through the North Terminal. But it's not just mainstream duty free that's had um, very significant makeover here. There's a fresh face to food and beverage too. Yeah, we're really excited that Jamie Oliver's opened his flagship diner concept here in South Terminal, opened a few weeks ago. Um, it's doing really, really well and it offers another dimension to the choice that we have within food and beverage across the South Terminal. So it's been really well received by customers um, and we're looking forward to it continuing to grow and develop as it gets uh, bedded in within the airport. What is different about Jamie Oliver's diner? So Jamie Oliver's Diner is inspired by America, so burgers, uh, there's barbecue food, and then we've also got rotisserie chickens. Um, but as a concept, we've also got a deli there so that people can get hot food to go to take away, where you can get pizzas and other food to take away. So it's, uh, a, it's a combination of different concepts in one. Now, when you set about choosing a new business partner, what's the process you follow to ensure the Gatwick's landscape remains diverse and importantly meets passengers needs so there's lots of different sources of information that we go to when we're try trying to make a decision about a new retailer um, for example we look at sales of existing retailers to understand what's working well what's not working so well we of course talk to our customers we have lots of different routes of customer research whether it's surveys or focus groups and, and other ways of getting information through my Gatwick for example where we have people who subscribe and we pull all of that together to build a picture of what people want. Um, and then we use that to talk to our retailers and to talk to potential new retailers about what they might bring to the airport. We have various criteria that we would be looking for. So, for example, airport relevance is really important to us. We have a lot of people traveling through on holiday, for example. So making sure that we have a relevant product for them at whatever time of the year they're coming through is a really key consideration for us. What's noticeable about uh, Gatwick Terminals, you've actually introduced a number of uh, pop-up stores. Now, is this a new method um, to test or trial uh, a particular style of retail uh, as well as um, catering for seasonal variety? Yes, the pop-up strategy is really intentional strategy for us here at Gatwick. We identified that it was often quite challenging for new retailers to come into the airport and often there were products that were seasonally relevant but not necessarily relevant for the whole year. So the pop-up strategy allows us to let those spaces in six-month intervals and we're able then to see how different products work um, and also to, to change them out for different seasons. So for example, Javianas, um, who are here at the moment, have had a fantastic summer. It's their third summer here. It's been enormously successful as a brand within Gatwick. How do you stay competitive against the high street and the burgeoning threat of online? There's always competition in retail. I think that's part of what makes it dynamic and fun. Um, but the key from my perspective is about making sure that we remain relevant and we give people the choice that they want to have. Um, online has been a threat for many years. It's not something that's new, but it remains. And it is another channel to market that retailers can use. For Gatwick, it's about making sure that we create an environment that when passengers are passing through, they can find what they want or browse if that's what they're interested in doing. Um, and making sure that we enhance the experience of their journey alongside any shopping that they may want to do.
as an airport, you always try and make life simple for your traveling passengers. Um, what other innovations have you introduced recently that will make a difference? So passengers tell us that, that making life as straightforward as possible in the airport is really important to them. It can be quite a stressful time when they come through the airport and anything we can do to, to make things more straightforward is really valuable. Um, for example, we've introduced Reserve and Collect so people will know that they can pick up their products when they're coming through. And with the launch of the app coming up, that's something which we're going to explore how we can use that within retail to again enhance the journey for passengers. How do you think the app, though, is going to change the landscape of Gatwick Retail? I think the app has lots of opportunity and it's something that we're looking to learn from as it goes live um, and continually develop so that we can uh, test different products and see how they're adopted and if they work then really roll them out and if they're not working then develop and adapt them appropriately. So it's something we want to borrow from the digital world of that continual testing and learning and, and then implementing once you've got things that work. How important is data to you? Well, data is hugely important. Um, for us, as I think it is to many organizations. Uh, but I think the real challenge for anybody with large quantities of data is how to make sense of it and how to really use it. Um, data in its own right is not particularly helpful. It's, it's the information it can give and the insight that it can bring. And that's something which we're constantly trying to adapt and learn from so that we really use data well and make high quality decisions on the basis of the information that we have available to us. Airports plan ahead. What's your vision for the next five years? So my vision for Gatwick falls into two parts. The first is around continuing to listen to our passengers and to learn from them so we can optimise the offer that we have and, and make the best use of everything that we have here in the airport. And secondly, it's about finding the right case for investment to expand the retail offer. And the opening of the new walkthrough duty free in North Terminal is a great example of that, where broader innovation across the airport created an opportunity for retail to extend its space. I want to go back to the point I made earlier about the airport's sole focus being customer centric. Just how do you maintain this core value? We have lots of ways of maintaining our customer centricity. I think one of the main things around it is the fact that we have an Insight, Insight team who are out and about every day in the terminals talking to our passengers and understanding what their experience has been. And that's really valuable information and we use that. The second thing is also about watching what's going on in the market. The high street is often a good barometer of what might or might not be successful within an airport environment. So my team are always out and about looking at the innovation that's taking place. We've got a fantastic melting pot of things happening in central London. So we're always out and about looking at what's happening there, who's emerging, what looks like it's successful, and then trying to adapt the best of that for the airport environment. Finally, Rachel, if there were three words that could best describe the Gabrick experience, what would they be? Retail at Gatwick is about relevance, choice and quality. Those are the three things that we're always striving to deliver for our customers and they're at the heart of our development of our retail proposition. Rachel, thanks for your time. Thank you.